Thank you for joining us today. My name is Lisa Ammon and I serve as president of, of the Louisville Forum. We meet on the second Wednesday of every month at Vincenzo's Restaurant. The Louisville Forum is a nonpartisan public issues group founded in 1984. We host debates and discussion of contemporary and sometimes controversial public policy issues that affect the greater Louisville community. Although we may take up an issue that has a national interest, we try to highlight the local perspective. For more information on the Louisville Forum, our programs, or to make reservations, please visit our website at louisvilleforum.org. Our topic this month is For Whom the Bridge Tolls. We have with us today Mindy Peterson. Mindy is introducing drivers to Riverlink, the all-electronic tolling system that is making Louisville, Southern Indiana, Ohio River Bridges project possible. Mindy is working to ensure drivers know their options and have the information they need well in advance in the start of tolling. Mindy has been part of the Ohio River Bridges Project, one of the largest transportation projects in the country since before the first shovel of dirt was turned. She spent nearly two decades at WHAS Radio informing people of the latest news, traffic, and information. Mindy works at C2 Strategic Communications and lives in Louisville with her husband and two sons. And I would also like to mention that we have Dan Hartledge with us today. Dan is a board member of the Louisville Forum, and he's available to answer questions about the bridges as well. Dan is a principal with uh, Guthrie Mays Public Relations. And to my right here, we have Greg Condra, who is our vice president. So without further ado, please welcome Mindy Peterson. Thank you so much, Lisa, and thank you for having me today. I know this is a little bit different format than what you are accustomed to. The goal of today is to give everybody a much better understanding of what's going on, what's happening with tolling, what exactly is Riverlink when we talk about Riverlink, what's all electronic tolling, that's a new concept for us, how does that work? Most importantly, how do you pay the lowest rates, whether you are an individual or whether you are a business? That is all information that we are going to cover today. So it seems like a lot of territory. It is certainly not difficult. This is something that a little deeper dive is incredibly helpful. And so that's what we're going to have a chance to do today. So I'm very thankful for the opportunity. First of all, I would be um, not doing a very good job if I didn't talk about the Ohio Bridges project to begin with because we could not be at a more exciting part of the project. Dan knows that. I know that. We've been along for the ride. You guys have been uh, on, the, on the front row making it through this traffic for the past three plus years. The very best news that I can deliver to you today is that the project is on schedule, on budget as well. On schedule is the big news. What that means is after really decades of debate, and now three plus years of construction, we are truly weeks away from the finish line. And when I talk about being weeks away from the finish line, I'm talking about those orange barrels downtown going away. I'm talking about giving you free flowing traffic back on your interstates, and we're talking about an improved interstate system. So big, big improvements are on the horizon, and they are on the very near horizon. So the Ohio River Bridges Project, as you probably are aware, is a very big one for us. This is a $2.3 billion project that I can't tell you how many folks I've talked to that we just didn't know, even after construction had started, when we held Walk the Bridge last year and we had 50,000 people come out to be a part of history and walk on the Lincoln Bridge, I talked to young, I talked to old, so many people that day who said, I never thought I would see it. I never thought I would see it in my lifetime. And now here, at the end of this year, by the end of the year, two new Ohio bridges open and fully open to traffic. It truly is going to be a game changer for our region. When you talk about economic impact, $87 billion in supporting 15,000 new jobs over the next 30 years. We are in such a sweet spot geographically, the Louisville area. When you couple that with the fact that you are going to have a dramatically improved transportation system, a safer system, a more efficient system, for our region, so many doors are going to open. So it's a very, very exciting time. Now, with all of that uh, fantastic news on the economic front and all of the new doors opening, and personally for us, seeing a faster, safer ride each morning and every afternoon, 
All of that doesn't happen without tolling. That's why it's important to have this conversation. Tolling is certainly not a new concept, but it's been a long time since we've had it in our area. 1946 is when tolls were lifted on the Clark Memorial Bridge. It was 70 years ago. It has been a long run. That's the last time we had a tolled facility in the area. So it takes some time to get that conversation going again. It cost, at the time, 35 cents to cross the Clark Memorial Bridge, which sounds like a bargain, but when you add in inflation, we're talking five bucks today, so not such a bargain after all. Um, but it's, it's important to have the conversation because not only has it been seven decades since we've had tolling, but we've never had all electronic tolling in our area. Certainly not a new concept. It is new to us, and that's part of what we have to wrap our minds around. So what is Riverlink? When we talk about Riverlink, I've had a lot of people ask me, is it a company? Where are you? What is it? Riverlink is simply a brand. It's the brand of our tolling system, just like Florida has the Sun Pass, Georgia has the Peach Pass. The river is what unites our area. And so it's unique to our system. Simply the brand of our tolling system is Riverlink. So a lot of folks have said, I don't understand. How does all electronic tolling work? Where's the toll booth? I still, that question is asked. No toll booths. We are not going to build this fantastic new transportation system and then slow you down to pay tolls. We would be losing all of the efficiencies that we're giving you with the transportation system. So that's not going to happen. If you cross the Lincoln Bridge or the Kennedy Bridge, you will see on the Indiana side the big aluminum gantries over the roadway. On the Kennedy side, and now they've been added to the Lincoln side, you will also see more than two dozen cameras that have been installed on the Kennedy side. You will see several sensors as well. They look a bit like a pizza box. Those sensors are going to read your transponder. We're going to talk more about transponders. They will read your transponder and deduct the appropriate toll from your prepaid account. That's the important concept here. When we talk about all electronic tolling, the way for you to ensure the lowest rate is to have a transponder. You only get a transponder when you set up a Riverlink account. So we're talking prepaid tolling. That's what we have to wrap our minds around. To get the lowest rates, we need to have Riverlink accounts. We're prepaying for our tolls. So that's important to keep in mind. But when we have all electronic tolling, we are talking about no lines, no stopping, no toll booths, so that means no kids in the back seat saying, I want to throw the coins rolling down the window, and then when they throw the coins and they miss, you're frantically searching for more coins. None of that exists with this system. So how does it work? We talked about those cameras, that we talked about the cameras. What's going to happen is, if you have a Riverlink account and you have your transponder, you're going to cross a toll bridge, that transponder is going to be able to, with radio frequency technology, it's going to say, oh, cross the bridge. And it's also, because this is a system that was developed by folks who are much smarter than myself, we have sensors in the roadway that will tell us how many axles your vehicle is. We have lasers that will tell us how tall your vehicle is. You don't need to do anything else. We know if you're in your pickup that day and you are a two-axle vehicle paying with a transponder $2, we know if you have a boat behind you. If you've added another axle and you're now bumping into the medium category, for the day only, because you have a boat or a trailer, and you're going to be paying $5 with a transponder. The system knows all of this. If you do not have a transponder, we have those cameras. A lot of people have asked me, how good are the cameras? The cameras are very good. They are good. There is a test track in New York, and all they do, they go, they go around that track, high speed. So we had a motorcycle. You know a motorcycle plate. Those things are small. Going around 100 miles plus an hour crystal clear image of that small motorcycle license plate. So the cameras are very, very good. And we do have several of those in place. So if you don't have an account, you're going to get a bill in the mail. We'll talk a little bit more about that. What is that bill going to look like? So the thing that I hear most is, when is it going to start? How much is it going to cost me? Those are big questions. I can tell you, tolling is expected to start in December. We are November now. That is right around the corner, okay? I can't give you an exact start date quite yet. I know people are eager to hear the date. The reason why, this is a brand new system. We are installing the system and we are testing the system. And we have to do that under live traffic conditions. So, no start date yet. Don't let that lull you into a false sense of security that tolling is not going to happen. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen in the near future. If you're an individual or a business, and if you've not set up your account yet, 
now is the time to act. It really is. And we're going to talk more about that. So we talk about how much it costs. These numbers over here on this board are nothing new. These are numbers that we have seen for quite some time. They were approved in 2013. And we're going to talk about what those numbers mean. The vehicle classification system, which was approved this May, is basing the toll rate entirely on vehicle height and number of axles. If you and I are in our two axle vehicles, you're talking, trans uh, you're talking motorcycles, you're talking passenger vehicles, minivans, vans, uh, SUVs, that's going to be a two axle vehicle under seven and a half feet with a transponder, $2, okay? We're gonna talk about that $3 rate too in just a second. Toggle over, if you do not have an account, if you don't have a transponder, you're talking $4 versus two, that's double. That's a lot of money. That's every single trip. That's why we're talking about it. It's important to know the system. Medium vehicle category for business owners. This was very important that we make that category deliberately large. It includes every two axle vehicle over seven and a half feet. So you're talking your box trucks. You're talking about a few of the very high profile vans that they have out now. All three axle, all four axle vehicles. It does not matter weight. All of those vehicles are included. Many of those three and four axle vehicles are delivery-based businesses, or they're service-based, and they're right here in this region. And several of those businesses are going back and forth across our bridges every day. So it was very important to Kentucky and Indiana to make that category as large as possible to try to assist our businesses. So with a transponder, all of those vehicles are paying $5 per crossing. And then the large category, no surprises there. Everything with five axles or above is going to be a large vehicle with a transponder, that's $10. So those are the rates. Look at those columns, and we're going to talk about what those mean. That first column, whether you are an individual, whether you are a business, that will ensure you are paying the lowest rate with a transponder. So that's two, five, and 10 for the categories. That means you have your transponder in your windshield, it's mounted correctly, you're good to go, sensor reads it, lowest rate deducted from your account. What's that middle number? For personal vehicles, what's $3? I get that question all the time. These are people who have gone to all of the trouble of setting up an account. They've given us their information, they've given us their money. They have money sitting in their account, they've shared their vehicle information for whatever reason, they have said no thank you to a transponder. And there is a free option, so I don't really understand why they're telling us no thank you, but they are, and that's fine, that's their choice. But we have a little more work to do then. What we have to do in that instance is, we don't have a transponder to read, so we have to take a picture of their license plate. Then we look up the vehicle information, find out who it's registered to, and we say, oh, they do have an account. And we deduct the toll from their prepaid account. A Little bit more work for us. Very last column, when you look at the four and the seven and the 12, those are the folks who have said, I'm not gonna do anything. I, I'm not gonna open a Riverlink account. I'm not going to get a transponder. This is when the cameras come into play. We're taking a picture of their license plate and they're getting a bill in the mail. It's a lot more work for us, so it's going to cost more. So those are the costs that are associated with the folks who are not doing anything. So it's very easy to look at those numbers and determine if you have not opened your account yet, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and open that account. It is going to save you money. How do you do that? If you are an individual, there are three ways that you can open your Riverlink account. The process is very simple. It's about a five minute process. You can do it online, riverlink.com. That is by far the most popular way of opening a personal account. You hop online, you hop on your smartphone, open your account, make sure you first have all of your vehicle information, you're good to go. You can do so by phone. Give us a call, 855-RIVLINK. We have customer service representatives who are more than happy to help you. Again, about a five, seven minute process. Or we have two customer service centers. If you want to come in person, if you are somebody who loves that face-to-face, -face, we would love to see you. The other big difference with the customer service centers, cash. If you deal in cash, you're going to have to come to a customer service center. That is your cash option. So we have two customer service centers. One is on East Main Street, right here downtown across from Slugger Field. One is at Quartermaster Station near City Hall in Jeffersonville. They are open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, 8 to 2 on Saturday. Lots of opportunity to talk to folks. So go ahead and stop by. It's easy for you to maybe say, that's not a great location for me. It's not very convenient. That's fine. You never have to go to a customer service center unless... Like I said, you really want that face-to-face, -face, or if you're a person who deals in cash, and then you can come by, and they are more than happy to help you out. So what do you need when you want to open your account? This is 
whether you are a business or whether you are an individual, for every vehicle that you want to register, you need five pieces of information. Not hard. You need the year, make, model, color, license plate number. That's the one that kind of gives people pause. They have to look it up maybe. I don't know mine right off the top of my head. I certainly don't know my husband's. So before I open my account, gather, I gathered that information for every vehicle I want to register. I suggest you do the same. That way you're not going to get stuck with timing out on the system, anything like that. Gather that information. We're going to talk about businesses in just a second as well. The other key piece that you need to know when you're going to open your account, what type of transponder do you want? Okay. There are two options. This is the Riverlink local transponder. This is exactly what it looks like. This is the one that is free of charge, one per registered vehicle. So when you sign up for your account, whatever number of vehicles you have on it, we will give you one of these free for every vehicle. It's the Riverlink local transponder. So as the name suggests, the local transponder will work on our local bridges. So that's our local toll bridges. That's the Abraham Lincoln Bridge, the Improved Kennedy Bridge, and the East End Bridge. If you cross any of those bridges with this transponder in your windshield in a passenger vehicle, you're paying $2. You're good to go. So a couple of things about this one. It is a sticker. When you put it up, you're not taking it down, right? Because if you take it down, then you're going to destroy it. First one is on us. Second one is not going to be on us. It's going to be on you. A replacement is $5, so you don't want to move that one around. No need to. The other thing about this one, um, because all electronic tolling is new, it's very important that people understand, this goes on your windshield. We'll send you mounting instructions. If you sign up online or by phone, you're going to get this in the mail in about seven to ten days. We're going to tell you that you need to put it on your windshield, close to your rear view mirror, as high and as central as possible. Now, not everybody reads instructions as well as you would like. We've already heard from one gentleman who didn't understand because it came off in the car wash does not go on the outside. Don't put it on the outside of the, in of the windshield. You will run into problems. It goes on the inside of the windshield. We'll go ahead and give him another one for free to get him started since he didn't understand. So this goes in your windshield. It does have a unique number on it. You'll see a barcode and number. So if you have multiple vehicles, when this arrives in the mail, it's going to tell you which car that this connects with. You need to put it in that car and you're good to go, okay? Now, the other one that we have is the Riverlink Easy Pass Transponder. It's bigger. It looks just like this. It's hard case. Couple of big differences with this one. First of all, if you travel a lot, you're going to want this one. It works in 16 easy pass states. That network is primarily Northeast Corridor. You can kind of go Illinois East, and then you can kind of go Carolinas North, and that's going to hit the zone. All of those states are included in the network. Chicago is a big one for folks in this region. They know if you're traveling in Chicago, if you don't have an easy pass, not only are you paying more, they're slowing you down. They do have slow lanes. Not everybody uses an all electronic system. So in Chicago, you're watching other people go quickly by you and they're paying less. When you have your easy pass transponder, you're going to stay with that faster traffic and you're going to be paying less. So this one will cost, it's $15. That's what I like to call kind of a one-time lifetime option because that's battery life of this. Battery life is about seven to eight years. If it conks out on you before then, we'll give you another one for free. But otherwise, it's about a $15 investment. Other big deal about this one. This one adheres to your windshield with dual lock, which is basically Velcro, a little bit stronger. Velcro, you're pulling it up and down quite a bit, fuzzes out, right? So dual lock is a little bit stronger. We're going to give you the strips and you're going to put it in your car. So this one is portable right? You can move it from vehicle to vehicle registered to a single account. Why is that important? Frequent user discount is one reason why. We're going to talk about that in just a second. So that's the big difference. This one works in 16 states. $15. You can move it around. Two vehicles registered to your account. This one, permanent. Once you put it up, don't move it around. Free, one per vehicle, and only works on our local bridges. So those are your choices when it comes to transponder options you absolutely can mix it up. If you say, I do some amount of traveling, I have teenage kids, they're not, you can get one of these for your household and move it around. You can get two, but you don't want to have both of these in the car at the same time. We're going to talk about that when we talk about frequent user discounts. So keep that in mind, but you can do a combination. Businesses, absolutely. You can do a, trans a combination of the two transponders to meet your needs. So there's been some confusion. People have said, I think I'm going to get the transponder. I'm going to get this one. They're both transponders. Both of these will do the same thing. Ensure you're paying the lowest rate. 
no matter what size of vehicle, no matter how often you cross, these will get you the lowest rate. The other thing is, both of these, if you are an individual, will qualify you for the frequent user discount. So your personal account, when you open your personal account, it's going to work like this. I open mine online. Minimum of $20. You have up to four vehicle slots. You can do whatever you want with those slots, okay? Those cars do not have to be in my home. What I did, I put $20 in my account because I don't travel back and forth tremendously. I put myself, I put my husband, and I put my 18-year-old son who I think has been to Indiana once or twice in his life on his own. He'll go back someday. He really will. And I want him to pay $2, not $4. I have another son who just turned 16. So as soon as he starts driving on his own, I'm going to add that vehicle. For the moment, I said, send me three of these for free. I've already received these in the mail. Mine is up in the car. I'm good to go. I will log on when Ben starts driving, add his information, say, send me one more of these for free, and I'll be good to go. This is the default when you're signing up. If you do the drop-down box, you can choose the Riverlink Easy Pass transponder. This one you get in seven to 10 days. I've heard from a lot of folks who have ordered this one and they said, where is it? These have not been mailed out yet. And there's a reason. They will work in 16 Easy Pass states. Right now, our systems are not all talking to one another because we're not fully operational. If you have ordered this, you will get it before the start of tolling. You're not going to get it yet. These will be mailed out just before tolling starts in the region. We don't want to give you something and then have you go to Chicago this weekend, and then you're like, what's wrong? Why didn't my Easy Pass work? We're not talking yet to that system. So these will be distributed a little bit later. So let's talk just a little bit about the frequent user discount. Is there anybody in this room that the frequent user discount will apply to? Okay. So the frequent user discount, only for individuals with personal accounts in passenger vehicles, and they have to be in good standing. So we're talking about individuals. It is a high mark. It is 40 one-way trips, 20 round trips in a calendar month. So you are talking about somebody who really lives on one side of the river, works on the other side of the river, driving back and forth five days a week. Are there people who work full-time that work three-day work weeks and four-day work weeks? Of course there are. However, tolling exists because we have to pay for these beautiful new bridges and this great new transportation system. We cannot hit everybody with a discount. This is where we've landed right now. It's a high number. I will tell you this. We are one of just a handful of tolling systems across the country that offers any type of frequent user discount. We are the exception, not the norm. The mark that we are using, the 40 trip mark, very close to what other systems are using. So somewhere along the way, we've gotten it a little bit backwards because I've talked to some people who view this really as a penalty when they're not hitting it and they're upset and they're mad, and, but there are months where this happens and then that happens and life happens. Life does happen. That's okay. The frequent user discount will reset every month. So if you don't hit it one month, you can get it the next. What happens is everybody, whether you're making one trip or making 40 every month, everybody on the front end is paying $2 in a passenger vehicle with a transponder. Within 24 hours of crossing the bridge, you're going to be able to hop on your smartphone, hop online, and see your activity. Let's pretend this is not the date. Let's pretend that tolling starts December 15th. I would hop on on the 16th, and I'll see a... I crossed the Lincoln Bridge at 8 o'clock in the morning. I paid $2, and my balance is going to go from 20 to 18. I'm going to come back at the end of the day, and I'm going to see I came back at 5 o'clock, paid $2. My balance is now at 16. If that's the day that my son finally decides to go back to Indiana, I will see his information on that, and that will all come from that same pot. Any vehicles that are signed up to your personal account, that money is coming out of your account. So when I talk about those four vehicle slots... It's fine if you want to take care of mom who lives across town and she's elderly and she does some traveling and you don't want her to fool with it, put her vehicle on your account. You just have to know that any vehicles on your account, you are saying, I've got them. I've got tolls for those vehicles. So mom, you love a lot. That, that's great. Put her on. Neighbor, probably don't love quite as much. I'm, I'm not going to put my neighbor on my account because anytime they're traveling across, I'm paying tolls for them. So those four vehicle slots are yours to do with as you will. You're a person that has five cars, six cars. What do you do? Open two personal accounts. No big deal, but it is maxed out at four, so you will need to open a second personal account if that's the case for you. Now, back to the frequent user discount very quickly. So you have all of the trips, 40 trips, $2. You see the entire column. After the 40th trip, you will see an automatic $40 credit to your account. 
You don't need to let us know. You don't need to raise your hand. You don't have to say, I made it. We will know. It will be automatic credit to your account, a $40 credit. Every additional trip that calendar month will be discounted to a dollar. Resets after the month. So somebody said, what if Johnny is sick one day and if I'm making 38 trips instead of 40? And I said, then you're paying $76 instead of 40. And I caught some grief because I said, I sure as heck would find a reason to go across the river. I would have dinner at Rocky's. I would visit a friend. I would visit family. I would do this. And they said, Mindy is promoting unnecessary trips. And I am not. But if somebody were standing in front of me and explaining the system to me, and if they didn't tell me, you make 38 trips, you pay $76. You make 40 trips, you're paying a net with the credit of $40. If they didn't tell me that, I'm feeling like they didn't do a very good job of explaining the system to me, okay? You have to understand where you are. Now, you are absolutely going to be able to go online and see how many trips you have made. Very important. Frequent user discount number of trips is per transponder not per account. This one, you cannot move around. This one, you can, okay? So if you want to maximize trips on an easy pass for the frequent user, that's fine. What I would suggest is when you get this in the mail, go ahead and mark it. Mark one with a big old black X or put F for frequent or put use me, whatever you need to do. Every time you have a trip in your household that does not conflict with somebody else across the river, use this one. You're either counting toward your 40 trips or you're at a discounted rate of a dollar afterwards. That's fine, but get enough of these to match drivers in your household because if you're across the river and then if you have a spouse or a child who crosses the river and they don't have anything, they're back to paying four bucks instead of two. You don't want that to happen. So consider getting enough of these to match drivers in your household if you truly are going to move them around. You do not want, as I said, both of these in one vehicle. This is the default. It's gonna read this one anyways, but other than that, things can happen, okay? You really don't want to pay tolls once. Certainly don't want to pay them twice. You could have the possibility of being double red, so you don't want to do that. So you need to make a choice on what type of transponder. If you're going to hit 40 trips in one vehicle with this one in the car, that's fine. You'll get the frequent user discount. If you want to target one for use, get enough of these for drivers in your household. So just something to think about there as we talk about that. So what do you need to do if you have a business and you have an open your account? Businesses are a little different. They need a little more care. There are businesses that have many vehicles in their fleet. We want to try to make that process as easy as we can. If you are a business, we are saying, call us. You cannot open your account online. There's a reason. We want to give you that specialized care. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. It's 855-RIVLINK. Tell us, I'm a business. I need to set up my account. We will connect you with somebody. We'll say, send us a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet, whatever you use, for every vehicle, you need those five pieces of information, year, make, model, color, license plate number. Send us that spreadsheet. We'll input the information for you. We need a payment source. We'll put the information in. Tell us how many of these you need or if you want a combination. We'll send them to you. So we will get you taken care of. So if you are a business owner, that's the thing to do. Individual or business. Businesses, uh, when you talk about recharging your balance, business is a minimum of $20 per vehicle, minimum balance, okay? So you have that in place. When you get down to a low balance, whether you're an individual or business, you can decide you want to do an automatic recharge. Do you want to link it to a credit card, checking account, debit card? You'll never hear from us again, right? Because you're always to the positive. So when I get down to $6 in something, I'm going to say, just put $20 in, and I'll see the charge to my credit account. I'll always have money in my Riverlink account. I'm good. That $20 may last me two months. It may last me six months. That's fine. The balance rolls over month to month. If you're recharging more frequently on a busy month, that is absolutely fine. No problems there. So those are the things that we need to keep in mind. If you do know somebody who is a business owner, let them know if they have a system that works with EasyPass, if they are a trucking industry member and they have PrePass, BestPass, if they have the EasyPass component, they are taken care of. They don't need to do anything else. If you have an easy pass from another state, you don't need to do anything else. But keep in mind, the frequent user discount is unique to our system. So if you want to get that, you have to have a river link transponder, either one of these, but you can't have your iPass from Chicago and have it work here because that is a local discount unique to our system. Very quickly, I want to talk about invoices and fees so you know what to expect because those bills will go out. And I, I told Joe prior to, I said, there are going to be folks who get that very first round of bills who will tell them, who will say, I didn't know. I didn't know there were going to be tolls. I didn't know it was going to be a toll bridge. They will be surprised. It's going to happen. This is what the bill is going to look like. 
you're going to get the very first bill, and it's going to be only for missed tolls. Now, keep in mind, these are people who do not have Riverlink account. Let's say you made one round trip in a personal vehicle. That's $4 without a transponder. You will get an $8 bill. If you pay your bill, that's fantastic. If you do not pay your bill right away, you're going to get another bill that now has a $5 administrative fee added to that. Now you're out to month two, and you don't pay your bill. Now you're in violation, and a $25 fee is added. Don't pay that. You're out to month three. You're now moving to collections, and there's a $30 collection fee added. You can do the math. Very quickly, that $8 bill in about three months plus becomes $68. Everybody wants to make sure the bills are pay taken care of. Nobody wants to pay a $68 bill. We don't want you to have to face a $68 bill. Make sure that you stay current with your account. We will have all kinds of signage up on the interstate that will say, you're getting ready to cross a toll bridge. Last exit before a toll bridge. Leave now if you don't want to pay a toll. We will have the signage up. After you cross the bridge, same thing. You just crossed a toll bridge. You can go to riverlink.com and take care of this bill. So it certainly will be uh, very apparent in Kentucky and Indiana if you do not pay your bills. When you go to renew your vehicle registration, and if you owe money to Riverlink, they're going to say, I'm so sorry, you cannot renew your vehicle registration until you pay the money you owe Riverlink. So... We certainly want to make sure everybody is paying his or her fair share, not just Hoosiers and Kentuckians, but everybody using the bridges. So we will be working with other states throughout the country on reciprocity agreements to get that same teeth to enforcement. And so we are going to do that. OK, no problems there. So you can listen to everything that I say. And you can say, no, thank you. Never want to cross the toll bridge. Not going to do it. Sherman Minton, Clark Memorial are your options. And we can talk a little bit tra about traffic and diversion. but. Before we do that, I want to see if you guys have any questions that I have not touched on today and answer any of those. Uh, thank you, Ms. Peterson. Um, I, we, we have a lot of questions here, so we'll try to get through them as quickly as sure. we can. Um, we have a question here. If I make a deposit in December, uh, but only cross the bridges one to two times a year, will I lose my deposit over a few years? And added on to that, was an, is a, another question is, if you have this large sum of money mm -hmm. that has been deposited, is anyone making interest on it or is it like in an escrow account? Right. How does that work? Great question. So let's talk about the first part first. Nothing is going to happen to that money as long as you are making a trip, okay? What happens is that is not a deposit. That is your Riverlink account balance. If you make at least one trip somewhere over the next year, you're absolutely fine. If you don't make a single trip, not one trip over a toll bridge, after 320 days, we will reach out and say, your $20 or whatever amount is still there. Would you like it back? If you say yes, we will send it to you. If you say no, we will say after a full year, 365 days, there is an inactivity fee. It's monthly and it's not low. It's $5 a month. So that would kick in after 365 days. If you make any trip, any Easy Pass system, that counts. If you do one trip across the Lincoln next November, that counts. The 365 days of inactivity would reset from that point. The money... The toll revenue is all going to Kentucky and Indiana. It is banked money. That toll revenue afterwards is split right down the middle. The pot is split in half and can only be used to pay off debt for the project or for maintenance of the bridges or for the Kennedy Interchange. What is the appeals process if we're charged incorrectly? For instance, I'm charged I didn't travel or I didn't read the transponder that was on my car. We have a, several different questions mm -hmm. asking about how to appeal. So the good news is we will have customer service representatives who are ready to help you. So that initial help is only a phone call away. If it gets beyond that, and if it really is a dispute that is not resolved with a simple call to customer service, you can go to any, either of the customer service centers right now. There is a hearing room that is set aside that there really would be a hearing process, but usually a phone call to a customer service representative would take care of any problem. Thank you. Uh, I guess uh, this one is for, uh, I guess, the privacy issue. Mm -hmm. Who or what government agencies will have access to the account info and the information gathered by vehicles crossing the bridges? Yeah, so you have a couple of things at play. You have uh, personal information as far as identification. So there are pictures. Those pictures are kept for a year before they are then put in the archives for another 10 years. Nobody would have access to that information without following the proper legal channels, working through that, making any requests for that. So nobody could say, hey, I want to see what was happening with this car. Couldn't do it. As far as your payment card information, we uh, Riverlink, basically. It caps Trafficcom is our, is our operator, but it adheres to all of the strictest of payment card industry standards. So all of that information, there are encryptions in place, uh, a lot of back office precautions that make sure that information is kept secure. 
Regarding the funding again for the bridges, uh, actually we have two questions. Well, first, actually, not funding related. But how does it work if you sell your old car and buy a new car? Mm -hmm. So if you do that, at that point, if you have this one, scrape it off. You don't want to pay tolls for the next person, right? Physically remove it. If you forget to do that, you're going to want to hop online anyways. Hop online, take that vehicle information off your account. At that point, you add your new vehicle and say, send me another one, please, for free in the mail. And we'll do so. You'll pay the lower toll rate until you get this one. You mentioned where the money is going. Mm -hmm. Two questions about that. One is... What vendor, I guess, who's making money to collect it, mm -hmm. and what percentage of the total cost of both the new bridges are being paid by the tolls? Okay, so we have about 50%, uh, I believe is where we are in the tolling. You will have to not quote me on that one, but I'm giving you my best recollection of where I am. I think it's about 50%. The rest is federal, state, traditional funding. So I think it's about 50 uh, The other part was... The the vendor oh, vendor. The Caps Traffic Com is our toll system provider. So we have a contract with them. Right now, that is a seven-year contract for them to install and operate our system. Kentucky and Indiana are sharing the expenses of that multi-year contract with each state paying about $2 million a year for them to operate the toll system. Um, the next question is, how long will the tolls be on these bridges? Is there a set date for them to expire? And I, I guess a, an add-on question to that is, could it expire for one set of bridges mm -hmm. and not another? No, this is, a, this is a joint effort, so it would be at the same time. And the answer is a long time. Uh, the <laughs> last, this is a $2.3 billion project. By the time you add interest to that project, the last bond will be retired in 2053. Okay, so in 2053, our fine lawmakers at that point would say, we're done with tolling. I will tell you this. They were very forward thinking in what they were doing here. And when we get to that point in the process, there actually is money from uh, toll revenue. If they choose to do so, money there for the replacement of the Kennedy Bridge, which is very, very important because that is a 52-year-old bridge that we've just made major, major improvements to adding at least 35 years of new life. You do the math. You see where we are about that 35 years of new life. So toll revenue, actually, there is money there to do a replacement for the Kennedy since the Sherman Minton Bridge, I-64, mm -hmm. will not have tolls, what's the projection for increased traffic on that bridge? Mm -hmm. And a follow-up to that in addition would be, if in fact that diversion traffic does not reduce, will tolls be added to the Sherman Minton Bridge? Great questions. Okay, so there's a traffic and revenue study that tells us on the Clark Memorial, it's, it's expected to be a pretty small uptick, about 2 to 3% in traffic. Sherman Minton is higher. It's about 12 to 14%. I can tell you we've already seen what that looks like. We saw what that looked like when we did not have direct access from the Kennedy to 6471. That traffic was already on the Sherman Minton. It's now moved back off with the Kennedy open, but we know what that looks like. That diversion is not expected to last long. The reason is this. We're all going to be going to work, and we're going to be enjoying this brand new transportation system, and we're going to be talking to people who said, oh my goodness, construction's done, and this was fast, and I got here in 20 instead of 45 minutes, or at the end of the day, you are getting home, and you are starting dinner when the kids are still hungry. You are making it to soccer practice on time. You're making it to the baseball game. I mean, it really is a quality of life issue. We're talking about tolling when construction has not fully wrapped up. When we finish construction, we had seven lanes originally on the Kennedy, right? Four north, three south. We are going to 12 lanes downtown. We are nearly doubling cross river capacity downtown. Couple that with the fact we have a brand new bridge. Any child could have looked at a map for years and said, What's wrong? There's a point here, there's a point here. You can't, you can't get it to either side. We have that East End Bridge. We will have it in December. 35,000 plus people are going to use that bridge every day. Couple cross river capacity doubled downtown with 35,000 people using the East End Bridge. This transportation system is moving downtown. So that diversion doesn't last long because people start talking to friends and neighbors and they find out it's worth my $2. I'm saving time. And would tolls be added? Potentially? There is no discussions to add tolls. We need to add, we need to offer toll-free alternatives in our community. So no discussions at all. Also, no discussions at all to sh shut down the Sherman Mitten, no extended uh, repairs, improvements. There are a lot of rumors going around. No discussions on that front. Um, the next question is, um, are there valid concerns about the tolling of having an economic impact on southern Indiana businesses? You know, I think what is important to remember is, we are improving a transportation system, and that's going to benefit individuals and businesses. Now, when we have people say, and, and there has been quite a bit of discussion on social media, started out with a lot of people saying, I'm never doing it again, never going to happen. 
people have softened tremendously. When they start realizing the benefits, I truly think we'll be there. And when you talk about businesses, um, you know, we talked about the frequent user discount for individuals. Businesses are also going to realize savings, whether they are a florist now making, you know, 10 deliveries instead of six or eight, or a house painter who now can do six jobs a week instead of four, or simply not paying a driver to sit in traffic, there are going to be all kinds of savings realized. So I think it will be a learning curve, and there will be people who say, I'm not going to do it. And then they'll start talking to their friends who say, it's not that bad, and they'll figure out and find their way back to Indiana or back to Louisville, and I think we'll be okay. You somewhat addressed this already. There's two, two questions about rates. Are there any free or non-told routes? Mm -hmm. There are two exemptions and two exemptions only. TARC buses, and one of that, uh, one of the concerns there is to make sure that we are providing a toll-free alternative to people who maybe would be from a lower economic community. So TARC buses are exempt. Emergency vehicles are exempt, all emergency vehicles. And in terms of the routes itself, I guess, would be Sherman Mitten and the Clark Memorial in terms of being able to get across the yeah, river. Yeah, so those would be toll-free op yeah, toll options for anybody who doesn't want to cross on a toll bridge. This isn't quite a tolling question, but it is. Are there any future plans to perhaps uh, have uh, require semi trucks or large traffic to go over the East End Bridge as opposed to going downtown? There were discussions, and those discussions I think have been around for a number of years, probably. But there are no plans to do so right now. Um, the next question is: Impressive to accomplish this project in three years versus uh, versus m more years. Some public projects usually need. Any best practices to share concerning labor union engagement? You know what? I wish I had the best information to speak to that. I don't. All I know simply is my relationship um, with Walsh Construction, and I can tell you that they have been a top-notch outfit and a great neighbor for the community. They have done uh, what they said they are going to do. They've worked with a number of local subcontractors at the height of the job, which was July of 2015, we had just over 800 workers on the downtown crossing. And so they have a tremendous effort and very, very receptive. So all I know is it's been a positive labor experience. I, I wish I had more to pass along, but I've also had a chance to talk to many of the workers, an incredibly positive experience. I've talked to people who came to the area who now want to figure out a way to stay, and people who were in the area who were so proud to have been a part of this job. How long are the current tolling rates fixed, and who has the authority to change those rates? Good question again. So those rates are going to stay where they are for just over a year. Every year, toll rates will be increasing every July, either rate of inflation or 2.5%, whichever is higher. Those are not going to go up in July of 2017 because we will not have even been with tolling for a year. So the first increase will be July of 2018. And so then they'll be going up cents on the dollar. What other nearby cities have currently have tolls on bridges? So you would have to go uh, for tolling, and um, bridges I don't know that we're talking about, but roadways certainly. Um, Chicago is one of the closer ones. Northern Indiana has toll system. Virginia, West Virginia are very big ones. We travel a lot in that area. They have toll systems as well. A lot of toll bridges, of course, in the New York area. I will tell you this, too. Our toll rates, when you, we talk about toll rates, it's easy to get sticker shock because it has been so long since we've had tolling. Look at other systems across the country. I promise you, we are at or below the average of, of where they are because those toll rates, I've talked to people who go to Chicago and they are astounded. I've talked, cost you, it can cost a trucker a hundred bucks, triple digits to move through the New York area. I promise you. So these toll rates are below the national average. What percentage of tolls will be, or do you project to be collected from local drivers versus pass through traffic? Mm -hmm. And how confident, are there any projections our studies to say what the compliance rate will be for people driving from Ontario to Florida. Right, exactly. It's not going to be as high as you would like, no matter what you can say, because we still need to work on those reciprocity agreements. So once our toll system is up, we can do that. The best news that we have going in our favor is being a member of the Easy Pass network, because as a member of the network, anybody from one of these 16 states, when they pass through our system, they'll be taken care of. They'll have their Easy Pass. That money will come out. The other good news on that front is that Congress, well, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that Congress was involved, Congress was involved and had mandated nationwide um, interoperability for tolling systems. It was supposed to happen by the end of this year. Clearly not going to happen by the end of this year, but I think it will happen in the near future. And when we get that interoperability and more and more people now have tolled facilities, it's going to be much easier to ensure that we're getting our money. Until that happens, we will be working with the various states. And it's, it's an easy sell because so many more states now have tolling. I can promise you that New York wants their money from us as we're traveling through, just as much as we want money from New Yorkers when they come through our area. 
And this, you may have already addressed this, but I ask it again because of what you just said about Easy Pass, uh, people who already have Easy Passes mm -hmm. from the Northeast mm -hmm. already on their vehicles. Do they qualify for the same rates? Can they use that when they in Riverlink? How does that work? They are good to go. They don't need to do anything else. The only thing they do not qualify for is the frequent user discount because that is unique to the Riverlink system. So you would have to either have the Riverlink Easy Pass or Riverlink Local Transponder to get the frequent user discount. Otherwise, Easy Pass from any other state, nothing else required. Uh, actually, this happened to me once. Uh, what is the plan? Uh, how does it work with rental cars? If oh, that is a good a question. Okay, so every rental company has their own policy. So you'll need to check with the rental company. Some will actually pre, you'll prepay and some you'll actually pay after the fact because they have your credit card information. I can promise you, rental car companies are in it to make money. It's unlikely you're going to be paying $2. This gets a little weedy, but stick with me. If you have the Easy Pass transponder, okay, and you have your personal account, you have four vehicle slots, right? If you have an empty slot or you want to temporarily move a vehicle off, when we send this to you, we send it to you in a Mylar envelope. You'll want to keep that. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But you could temporarily add the rental car vehicle to your account in one of those slots. Use the Easy Pass. Tell the rental car company, I'm good. I've got my tolls. I'm taken care of. Set a reminder on your phone. When you turn in that rental car, take that vehicle off your account. Otherwise, same thing. The next person who rents it, they're awfully happy because you're taking care of their tolls. So if you're somebody who does it a lot, I think it'll become second nature. If you're not, really, truly. Set return car, take information off account. So do that. The other thing I've asked people say, what if I have this for, what if I have this for travel? What if I have this in my car? Very, very quickly. Comes in this Mylar envelope. Keep that, okay? Put the Easy Pass in the envelope in your glove box if you have this one up in your windshield until you leave our area. Our system is the only one that reads this. When you get outside of our area, if you're traveling in the Northeast anywhere, pull this out of your glove box, put it in, you're now taken care of. When you get back to our area, take this out. This doesn't cause a problem for any other system because nobody reads it except Riverlink. So that's an option if you want to use this for travel, but you have this one in your car. And again, it gets weedy. It's a lot of information, but just something to keep in mind. Our final question, because our Louisville Forum members think of every eventuality, <laughs> what happens when driver-free cars become prevalent? That is a great question. I'm going to wait and cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. On behalf of the entire forum, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. And as a token of our appreciation for Mindy educating us on the tolling system, we have our Louisville Forum Mint Julep Cup for her. Oh, well, so thank, thank you, you very you. much. Thank you so much. Great. Our next meeting will be held on Wednesday, December 14th. Reservations can be made online at louisvilleforum.org or by calling us at 329-0111. Thanks and have a great day. <laughs>